Good day everyone, Complaining Gamer here. If you've ever seen the film Groundhog Day, you'd know that repeating the same day over and over again eventually becomes a nightmarish torture. Now, if we take that concept and transform it a little into something positive like constant performance improvements, we get close to what the team behind the original Switch emulator Yuzu have been achieving on an almost daily basis. This upward trend seems to know no end and you get to reap the rewards. The difference this time is that the jump in certain scenarios is borderline unbelievable. If you haven't checked out my video on docked versus handheld performance in Yuzu, definitely go check it out as there's some great details in there for you to munch on. The easiest game I can demonstrate this frame rate jump in is One Piece Unlimited World Red, a fully 3D rendered game. Just mere weeks ago, One Piece was a broken slideshow. Then it became somewhat playable and today it gets a lot closer to an authentic experience. But complaining gamer, we already know that One Piece and other titles can reach and maintain 60 FPS right now. You need to remember that's best case scenario on top end consumer processors, which is fantastic for demonstrating current possibilities, but ultimately limited in what it means to the wider public. The CPU in my system, the i5-6400 would be considered by many low to mid range. Pair that with the fact that Yuzu currently focuses on a single core performance. So we have an average somewhat aged CPU not being fully utilized with moderate to low single core performance. To see a huge leap in FPS in these conditions is a true testament to what the Yuzu team has genuinely improved. A key point I should also mention is that Yuzu runs on OpenGL, so yes, Nvidia wins, AMD loses here. For those curious, you'll find my full system specs below. Naturally, such improvements benefit most users on a wide range of hardware, but if you don't have the brute force single core speeds, then what kind of jump did we see? Let's take a look. Starting with an in-game cutscene, we can already see a boost of 15 FPS in this build of Yuzu. Opening gameplay facing the town shows the same difference in frame rate. When we turn to the lesser demanding mountain and sea, it's obvious that considerable improvements have been made here with Canary build 1035, reaching 60 FPS compared to the 45 of the older build. In a real world gameplay scenario, we actually start to see even bigger differences in performance with the FPS gap growing bigger by up to 20 frames. The intense town scene gameplay maintains this gap throughout. The following interaction with Yodoya was always a clearly demanding moment in my experience where significant drops would be obvious but impressively the changes in 1035 keep up the 20 fps difference that we're seeing in the combat section the frame rate will typically drastically change depending on whether the backdrop in that moment is the sea or the town at this point you may have realized that it's impossible to sync the two recordings because the difference in performance is too large in the burning land of punk hazard we fight a dragon and i must say that i think across the different platforms that i've played one piece unlimited world Red on it looks fantastic on Switch and in Yuzu. Here, the performance gap is slightly less when entering the town, around 10 to 15 FPS. During the dragon fight, the same boost in frame rate persists and puts a huge stamp of approval on Yuzu Canary Build 1035 for me. Interestingly, in this instance, when trying portable mode in One Piece, I personally didn't see a difference in frame rate, which you'd typically expect. Docked mode is already performing incredibly well. The reason these numbers are so impressive is because Yuzu hasn't even begun to implement multi-core support and to see such a leap, especially on my system, shows what incredible progress the Yuzu team is making. It is important to see what top end processors can squeeze out of Yuzu, but I'd argue it's equally if not more so important to observe improvements of lesser powerful systems opening the door to many more users. In a lot of games, you'll find physics tied to frame rate, meaning that a slowdown in FPS results in a slowdown in gameplay. So depending on what's being rendered on screen will hugely impact your experience. This is often easily tested by looking at the ground, sky or empty areas like the ocean. So what does this mean? Simply put, Yuzu is already outputting these numbers on a low to mid tier system whilst focusing only on single core performance. Once the Yuzu team refines the various types of caches and implements multi-core support, we are going to see these performance numbers go through the roof for a multitude of hardware configurations. 
My main critiques for now is that One Piece utilizes a lot of RAM and does experience sound desync and performance drops on certain cutscenes. It will also stall on many cinematics which you can progress through by pressing plus twice. These changes have impacted many titles of course but they were easiest to demonstrate for me using One Piece. Leave your ideas, thoughts and comments down below. Complaining Gamer social media links are also there. If you dislike the content, dislike. If you liked it, leave a like. And to stay up to date with all things emulation, subscribe and hit that bell icon. I'll catch you in the next one.